Okay. And so you find it over there, correct? Ah, okay, here. We are here at the Garda Lake and this boat found the scooter under the water. Judging from the shell dimension, I would say it was uh, one year under the water at least. Okay, let's take it home and fix it. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into the place You wanna love me? Well then baby I have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we can be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I'm there For fell this way I really hope that you will choose Paint and plastic are kind of ruined I see water inside the headlamp And in the rear lamp So let's see if we can fix it Let's see the part that we have to check First of all, the electronic parts, which are batteries, the BMS and the PCB which are connecting all the batteries, rear light, front light, throttle, motor, main ECU, cabling and dashboard. But we don't have to forget all the mechanical parts. So the beatings, then we have the wiring for the brake and the entire brake system needs to be checked. And also the brake lever. How many parts survived after one year underwater? Let's see it. I noticed that the motor was offering a viscose brakes, which means high friction with high speed and almost no friction at low speed. This could mean shorted motor or shorted speed controllers. The battery and the electronic compartment was totally full of water. Now let's remove the speed controller and the battery. Disconnect the wiring which are going to the real lights and the connector looks in good condition actually while the battery is full of water. To remove the fasten connectors press strongly with the plier because there is a retention spring. Yes, it is running freely this means that the motor is good and the speed controller is shorted. Let's start with the motor and its sensors. If it is working, it is already worth it to repair the scooter. The screws on the motor cover are very tight because of the oxide. So I have to use a big wrench and only later I can use an older screwdriver. The motor was completely full of water. But all in all, the motor is in good condition, so there is no rust and everything looks okay. We will see soon if the sensors are in good condition. The sensors are the one below the white uh, silicone. You have to remove the dust cover from the bearing because the, all the grease and the bearing are not really smooth. So I used some sweet oil on the bearing, then I used the Dremel to spin the bearing and let all the dirt jump out. So please remember to place grease and the dust cover back. You have to fix the bearings also for the rear wheel, of course. Pay a lot of attention when placing back the motor because magnets are strong and you may destroy your copper wires against the magnets. Now I will test it with an external speed controller. If at least motors and sensors are working, I will buy all the parts to fix the scooter. With a Flipsky external speed controller, I'm testing motor, sensors 
and throttle and they are working fine so at the moment we have motor and sensors okay throttle okay Billings, i had to work on them but they are okay and now let's check the dashboard pcb the pcb is not in good condition remove the plastic cap and then check the connectors they are wet but they all look good included the round connector there is even water on it but no oxidations and now let's check the motherboard pcb it looks in excellent condition so the coating is very well but if you check there are burned traces like this one and four out of six mosfets are in short circuit so i removed all the shorted one in order to be able to power the board but no sign of life from dashboard or motherboard connected therefore i purchased a seven pieces kit which included dashboard glasses for dashboard then the controller the throttle the front light and the rear light and finally the round connector cable which goes from the motherboard to the dashboard let's have a look at the controller it looks quite identical to the original one there is no copper bar on the bottom in order to enhance the current capability this is present on the original board so i reinforced the traces where they was looking too thin then i added some thermal paste below the mosfets recall to attach also the insulator and we are done with the motherboard checkup. And now let's have a look at the battery. Please don't do this. Really, it's not convenient, it's very dangerous, so don't try to fix a battery like this one. So now let me summarize my findings. First of all, the cells, they are each one at zero volt. I tried to charge them with a one tenth of the nominal current, 500 milliamp, to reduce the risk of explosion. And I found that five cells were damaged. Three were not even charging, two of them they were slowly discharging. So I replaced the bad cells and the remaining capacity of the pack was still 6000 mAh. But with the real test of the battery I was only obtaining 12 km out of it, it's not a lot. And the battery was also still pretty dangerous. So they preferred to change the entire pack. With 70 euro, I got 20 pieces of Samsung reclaimed battery, 3.45 amp hours. I will reach 7 amp hours. It's not bad. And now let's talk about the BMS. Let's remove the connectors and the rear NTC. It was looking pretty good, but uh, he gave me a lot of issues. First of all, this transistor was broken, preventing serial communication. Therefore, the dashboard was reporting error 21. Then I found that this thermal fuse was interrupted, and so I was not able to charge the battery, but only to discharge. The last issue I found on this battery pack was the real light not working on this connector. And I found that the PCB were damaged and I had to bypass them with two wires. But finally I purchased BMS and balanced PCB together and they are working very fine and they are also correctly balancing the cells. I will put a link on the description. Now let's close the battery and let's reassemble the entire scooter. Let's place back the dashboard. I also used the new LED headlamp instead of the old one, even if the old one was still working, despite the water inside. Remember to put back also the rubber cap. I guess it is protecting the connectors in case of rain. And push all the wires down the vertical steering tube. Now let's put back mainboard and battery. Place some thermal grease below the heat sink of the mainboard. screw back the speed controller and start attach some connectors. The motor's cables has to be blue, red and yellow. Do not invert the position, because it's a sensored motor. Now place the battery back, connect the BMS cable to the mainboard and then the charger cable and push everything below the clips. And finally the power cable. And now the last part. We have to remove, clean and fix the brake. Disassemble it completely and pay attention not to lose the three little balls. Scratch the pads, but I suggest you to change them because they are not breaking good anymore. And reassemble everything.
change also the cable line because it's very oxidated. We can finally close the battery compartment. That's it, job completed now. It's much better than before, but still not perfect. I spent 164 euro in total, including the charger. Not sure if this is worth it, but I would say yes.